Welcome back to Frequently Asked Questions for these two New York sommeliers. I'm Sarah, a wine educator and SOM in New York. And I'm Nicole. My question for Nicole, food and wine pairing. Mm -hmm. How do you pair savory foods with wine? Ooh, I love this question because I used to work as a sommelier at Momofuku. So a lot of the food is very savory and some sometimes I would even like go to the, the borderline of like funk, you know, there's fermented flavors, there's kimchi. Um, yeah, I have like a deep uh, passion for those things in my like everyday life now um, because of Momofuku. But it also created this amazing experience for me to be able to pair wine with a non-Western cuisine that's like very savory. Yes. It's exciting. Um, so the question is, <laughs> how do you do that? that? Yeah. Yeah. So you're still considering, I mean, you're still considering the texture of the food and maybe the more assertive flavors and you can do it in a couple different ways. You can do it with, um, a like and like pairing. If it has like similar earthy characteristics, it's going to be, um, very harmo harmonious. Um, or you can do a contrasting pairing where, the wine maybe highlights um, uh, an element in the dish or softens an element in the dish. Um, I would say like Riesling is one of the most versatile grape varietals in the world. Yes, because it can be made literally in so many different styles from an off dry, which would be, you know, a little bit of residual sugar um, or cabinet where it's like a kiss of residual sugar with lots of acid mm -hmm. um, or bone dry if you're talking about the GG Rieslings of um, of Germany which are always going to be dry. Um, these are great wines to pair with savory foods um, because you have like the gamut of options um, mm -hmm. and I loved pairing Riesling with kind of fattier like the pork buns at Momofuku. Mm. It's an amazing pairing yes be because that's the that's the contrast you know, you have, you have the fatty, you have the richness of the pork bun and like the fluffy, like little pillow bun. And, but then you have like the acidity. Just like, I like, like pillow buns. Yeah. <laughs> Don't we all after being <laughs> quarantined? <laughs> yes. <laughs> the, um, something that if I may interrupt. Yeah. When I went to culinary school and when I was in, um, uh, when I was in restaurants, I did not work in a restaurant that did a lot of non-Western cuisine. I did a lot of French-based, Italian-based, yeah. um, Spanish-based. And what I looked for when I was pairing food and wine was what is the cooking method? Oh, How yeah. did they make that fish? Was it poached? Or was it maybe seared with the skin on and with lots of an herb crusted? Or maybe it had cumin on it? Yeah. Uh, but the cooking method is what was the first thing that helped direct me to the wine if they ordered the food first. Mm -hmm. However, you do get those customers, that clientele, who order the wine first and they say, I'm drinking Barolo tonight. But then, you know, maybe later on they're like, so what do you recommend with it? Yeah. <laughs> you, I think you can do... Uh, some fish with Barolo. If you are working in a place yep. like Lure Fish Bar, maybe there is a barbecued eel something or other that yeah, might be good for the Barolo. A richer sauce, because then it's not about the protein, it's about the sauce. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Um, but that's how I would approach it classically, was mm -hmm. what's the cooking method? And then I would look at what are some of the flavors or ingredients as a secondary question. Yeah. And then I would get to the food and wine pairing, like, well, you could do this or that. And if there are mushrooms and thyme in it, oh, maybe we can do, maybe we can do Barolo. Maybe we can also do Pinot Noir. Mm -hmm. And then it's all about discussion though. Like what do you, what does the customer usually like? Because the last thing you want to yeah. do is sell them on a Muscadet if they really love California Pinot Noir. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You don't want that at all. Yeah. Um, and to your point, if you, if you also don't know much about cooking techniques, that's fine. Um, you can also go off of regional pairings. That could be a good way. Mm -hmm. Um, working at Momofuku, that wasn't really an option because you know, my making in Asia, I mean, it's, it's been, it's been done. It's happening, but it's, it's not a classic, uh, area to go to. So like 
with French and Italian cooking or just like the regions in themselves, you're like, well, what did they eat in Barolo? You're totally. like, oh, great, tagliatelle. Or yeah. like with white truffles. Totally, absolutely. <laughs> and same thing if you go down to, let's say Florence, you do Chianti Classico or Brunello with bistec, with Florentine oh, bistec. So good. Classic pairings. If it mm -hmm. grows together, it goes yes, together. together. Mm -hmm. And that is always a baseline. And I think that your, uh, your other two, the opposites attract. Yeah. And then also like with like. Those are three really great pairing principles that you can apply at home that will carry you through to, you know, whether it's just dinner with just you and your family or when we come out of this pandemic and it's much more open and we're having friends and family over. And even when you go out, even if you're going out now, actually. Yeah. You can you can apply any of those principles to what it is that you're eating, whatever restaurant you're at. Yeah, absolutely. Okay, stay tuned for more FAQs with Nicole and Sarah.